Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. Previously, I told you there's a new Raspberry Pi 5. It was available for pre-order. I just got mine in the mail recently. And we talked about getting the new Raspberry Pi imager so that you could get the new Raspberry Pi OS called Bookworm. Let's take a closer look at the Raspberry Pi 5. They're recommending these accessories, either a case with the fan or active cooler with heat sinks and a fan there. Definitely want to Unfortunately, the performance will degrade as the temperature goes up, so you want to keep it cool. You definitely need the 27-watt USB-C power supply. We'll talk about the specs on that in a minute. Yeah, I got this Geek Pie metal case. Uh, seems nice enough kit. Look for the link down below. Comes with heat sinks, little rubber feet, standoffs. It's got a fan. Yeah, here's that 27 watt that had to go with the official one. I couldn't find anything else that's going to produce that 5.1 volts at 5 amps. Yeah, you're going to need some sort of case or active cooling. I got two matching TF cards so that we can go head to head with the Raspberry Pi 4 and check out the difference in performance. Let's go ahead and assemble the case. There's that Raspberry Pi 5. Got to install the heat sinks. Yeah, I'm looking at the directions here. Install the heat sinks. Install the standoffs. Put it in the case. And then hook up the little wire to the fan. And that plugs into this little port right there labeled fan. That actually had a little plastic clip over it covering it. So you might not see it right away. There's that Raspberry Pi with the heat sinks installed. I've installed the standoffs. The ones closer to the front are hard to get. The ones on the back are easy to get. <laughs> I've slid it into the case, installed the screws. Getting that first screw in there is a little difficult. There, I've plugged the fan into that port on the Raspberry Pi 5. Now we just need to seal up the case. Of course, you need a micro HDMI to HDMI adapter. Make sure you have one of those handy. All right, so we're ready to fire up Raspberry Pi Imager. 1.8.1 still is the current version, the latest version. It lets you filter on your particular device so that you can see specifically what operating systems are available for that device. So Raspberry Pi 5 only has Debian Bookworm as the Raspberry Pi OS option. Uh, there's some Ubuntu options, server and desktop. And there's the bootloader EEPROM configuration. Yeah, to restore factory default settings and change the boot priority. You can also erase your TF card here. I'm not aware of any custom images that you could load, so I'm going to go with the Debian Bookworm 64-bit. Yeah, see, I've selected Raspberry Pi 5. Choose the Debian Bookworm. And now I choose my TF card. And I want to check these customization settings. Yeah, we want to set up our Raspberry Pi 5 so it has a unique host name on the network. So I'm going to call it Raspberry Pi 5. We want to go ahead and add a user named Shotoku Tech and give them a password. We want to configure Wi-Fi and you got to make sure to scroll all the way to the bottom to select your country code. And finally, we want to set locale settings. On the services tab, I want to make sure that SSH is enabled. And then under options, I'm going to turn off telemetry and turn on play a sound when the image is done writing. Okay, so we go ahead and apply the customization settings we just configured. And I'm going to go ahead and say yes to go ahead and write that image. And we're going to crop the rest of this out because you and I both know it takes a really long time. Okay, rate my setup. I got this portable OLED display. I've got my AGP Tech video recorder. See my metal case, my Raspberry Pi 5. All right, wireless keyboard and mouse. We capture a little bit of the startup. 
the AGP tech requires a signal to record anything. So there's several cycles, but overall the startup was very quick and it doesn't fill up the screen with a bunch of text. It just shows that lovely logo and little stuff going by. I love the wallpaper here and you can see we're connected to the Wi-Fi right out the gate. Okay, so we're ready to run sudo apt-git install sysbench. This is going to give us tests that we can run against the CPU, I.O., writing data to the TF card, and also a memory test. And we're going to put that side-by-side -side between the Raspberry Pi 5 and Raspberry Pi 4. Okay, here's the CPU test. I'm going to copy that and paste it in here. Hit enter. And off we go. This one goes by pretty quick. We'll go ahead and wait it out. There we go. I'm not going to comment much here on the results that you're seeing. I'm going to run the other tests and we'll have some charts <laughs> at the end of the video to compare the two. Okay, this is the I.O. output of your Raspberry Pi. Basically, it's writing two gigabytes of data to the TF card. 128 16 meg files. Fortunately, cleans them all up afterwards. We're going to go ahead and crop this out. There, the test's finished. Again, I'm not going to comment on the results here. Took 100.54 seconds to write that. And that was 20.37 megabits per second. Here's the memory test. I'm going to open another terminal. Go ahead and paste that. Hit enter. This one goes really fast. That was uh, <laughs> a half a second to write two gigs to the memory there. Let's arrange these all side by side so we can take a look. Again, I'm not going to comment in detail here that much. We'll wait until we get the results of Raspberry Pi 4 and put them side by side in Excel with some little graphs and stuff. Okay, like I said, we had matching TF cards, so the performance should be the same between the two. And we're going to go ahead and fire up that Raspberry Pi 4. Both of them were 4 gig units. You can see I've selected Raspberry Pi 4 as the device and imager. I want to go ahead. I'm just going to check the settings real quick. Yeah, all the settings that I had in there from before are still there. And we want to name this host name Raspberry Pi 4. Everything else is in place. SSH is enabled, and the options I selected are still there. We apply that. We'll go ahead and write that image to the TF card, and we'll crop this out. Okay, so I've already booted the Raspberry Pi 4. No sense showing that. We're running the CPU test. Here's our first terminal. Copy, paste, hit enter. Seems like it's taking a little longer. Oh, no, that's right. That's the same. Both of the tests are 10 seconds. It's how many events per second. Let's fire up another terminal, get that I.O. test going. Writing the two gigabytes of files. And, of course, we're going to crop this out. This did, to my memory, seem like it took a little longer. There's the results. Oh yeah, 15 megabits per second. So it's clearly 33% faster on the Raspberry Pi 5. Here's the memory test. Okay, that's done. Yeah, that was almost a whole second. So almost double the time of the Raspberry Pi 5. We'll get these side by side so you can take a look. Go ahead and pause and look at the details there. Okay, let's go check out the charts. Okay, so let's look at the performance difference between the Raspberry Pi 5 and the Raspberry Pi 4. You can see this is CPU, and it's basically total number of events is almost double between the Raspberry Pi 5 to Raspberry Pi 4. The total time is equal because it was a time test. And then when we look at the latency, this is where an interesting story comes in here. You can see minimum and average latency are very low on the Raspberry Pi 5. Latency max is 294. 
and but it doesn't nudge that 95th percentile it looks like a calculation error the 95th percentile is actually lower than the latency minimum but you can see that latency max isn't driving the 95th percentile now on this side you got 1.71 minimum 1.74 average that 3.5 latency actually nudges the 95th percentile up to 1.82 that's a CPU. This is the memory. Now this was writing the same two gigabytes of memory and it's just a matter of how much time it took. Basically the Raspberry Pi 5 came in almost half the amount of time it took the Raspberry Pi 4 and when there's latency writing to the memory you can see the latency on the Raspberry Pi 4 is much greater by a magnitude than the Raspberry Pi 5. Here on the disk I.O., this is writing to the SD card. I was surprised there was that, that much of a difference on this. Yeah, you can see the Raspberry Pi 5 is writing about 33% faster than the Raspberry Pi 4, completing in about 25% less time. Look for a link to the GeekPi case in the description down below. Leave a comment down below if you have specific tests you want to see run between Raspberry Pi 5 and Raspberry Pi 4. Give this video a like and before you go watch more of my Raspberry Pi videos, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.